How's it going my friends and welcome back to yet another virtual tour video. Today we're talking two neighborhoods in one because they're adjacent to each other. Their lifestyle is going to be almost identical. We find that people who are looking at the one are pretty much always considering the other. In fact, they even share the same name. It's Hampton and Southampton. And uh, you know me, I love a good Whole Foods. I love a spot that has a Whole Foods. There's a Target over there. Love a good Target. Who doesn't love a good Target? And all in all, they're just very nice spots. I'm excited to share it with you. So let's dive in, shall we? How's it going my friends? My name is Jesse Lynch and I work with the hardest working real estate team in the game. We are called Welcome to Denver and you can check out our website welcome to denver.co. But this YouTube channel is all about helping you find a place to call home, a place to land here in beautiful Denver, the Front Range, Colorado in general. And that's whether you're buying a house for the first time or relocating here from a different city, state, country, planet, dimension like some of y'all. We hear from y'all. You're like, yeah, this is literally another dimension I feel like I'm living in. Not gonna name any names. But first time home buyers and relocations, that's what we do, that's what we specialize in, that's what we focus on, and that's what we do better than anybody else. So if any of that sounds appealing to you, do me a favor, do yourself a favor, subscribe to this channel, click that bell to get notified, give the video a thumbs up, I would appreciate that so much, and say something helpful, funny, whatever, in the comments. And as always, if you're thinking about moving here, get a hold of us, we will crush it for you. Your boy here, huh? I'm officially a licensed loan officer. I have a great team, uh, basically, who I have the absolute luxury of working with, but yeah, you can work with me, you can work with the team, and start to finish, we got you. So, okay, anyhow, go to our website, welcome to denver.co. We have a contact form there that we can fill out in like 30 seconds or less or just shoot us an email directly to info at welcome to denver.co. It'll lead to the same inbox, so it's completely up to you how you do it. Today's video, we're look, taking a look at two neighborhoods in one because they're honestly just very close to each other. It's Hampton and Southampton, which this park, this is George Wallace Park. It fundamentally butts right up to Denver Tech Center. DTC, if you will. And honestly, it's just got a lot going for it. So excited to share that with you, uh, shall we? I think we shall. Let's just dive in. Let's get her going. Let's get moving. I'm just kidding. All right, let's get moving. All right, y'all, I said it earlier, but Southampton and Hampton are like right by and actually even sort of overlapping with Denver Tech Center, which is where I am right now. Very much a, a beacon, very much like a sort of a magnet for folks who are coming here to work, right? So this Denver Tech Center, it's like, I wanna try to do as much as I can about it, but this is a really good place to start. So Hampton and Southampton, they basically are stacked right on top of each other like the sort of South implies. We're about 25, 20 to 25 minutes to downtown Denver. It's pretty convenient and the highway access is actually very, very slick, especially from this uh, uh, Denver Tech Center. Um, but you're also, conveniently, I think, uh, <laughs> but about 25 to 30 minutes to the airport. So it's kind of a nice in-between, not like ridiculously far from either one. And then naturally, like if you were to live in Hampton or Southampton and work in Denver Tech Center, that's a very, very easy 
commute. Hampton is slightly uh, bigger of a, of a landmass and slightly more populated. Uh, respectively, 20,000-ish people in Hampton, 17-ish thousand people in Southampton. So total of 37,000 people between the two. And honestly, the borders are a little bit wacky. So I'm not gonna get too into those. However, <laughs> the west border is pretty, uh, pretty easy. That's basically just I-25. And then the south border is basically Bellevue Avenue. So those are pretty simple. And then the north and east get a little wonky. The schools here are decent. According to niche.com, that's what we use for all the ratings just because they have the most ratings available, um, which is nice. But the yeah, it's just, just okay as far as the schools are concerned with like a few standouts, right? Thomas Jefferson High School gets an A minus. Um, that's generally quite good according to niche. Um, that serves all of Hampton and Southampton. So the high school game, definitely pretty decent. Um, once you get into the middle school and the elementary school, you, uh, you're gonna find that there's one standout elementary school called Southmore Elementary School. That gets an A minus. And Southmore, like the name implies, only serves Hamden South. Um, but the schools, you know, the schools in Hampton are decent, B plus and a B minus respectively. So, eh, you know, schools, are not like the highlight of this area. Access to Denver Tech Center, access to, you know, downtown Denver, and really a fairly central access to the southern portion of the Denver Metro, right? Uh, access to Boulder, not awesome. Access to uh, Fort Collins, all oh, definitely not awesome. And you'll also find that home prices vary uh, a bit between the two. It's interesting how they generally, well, I don't know if it's interesting, it's uh, not shocking to me, how they generally correspond with school grades, right? We, we see that all the time, that very often the most expensive places have the highest rated schools. Um, that said, okay, you have uh, in Hampton, median sale price is 650 for single family homes. In Hampton South, you have a uh, median sale price of 862. So, I mean, $200,000 more expensive, but it's also the section that overlaps with Denver Tech Center. It's a little like newer, a little shinier and all that. So there's like a little bit of a gradient uh, from, from sort of north to south and just like the newness of things and stuff like that. And you're also gonna see a pretty big uh, like amount of diversity in housing stock, right? The the houses, like you can have a neighborhood that ranges from 600,000. Maybe it's not like super, super ready to go, um, but nonetheless, maybe livable for 600,000. Uh, and then in the same neighborhood, you have like a $1.2 million house. So yeah, it's an interesting sort of dynamic for sure. And it's interesting between the two, it's almost an exact even split in terms of rental versus ownership rates. It's almost 50-50 exactly for both. But I do find that interesting. And I think uh, like kind of the floor, right? Like the, the barrier for entry in buying a single family home it's gonna be lower in Hampton, um, maybe somewhere around 500,000, maybe a little lower, but you know, the lower it goes, probably the less um, livable, moving ready it is. Um, whereas uh, for Hampton South, you're probably talking, you know, closer to six, 650, something like that, to really find something in these areas. But all right, what do you say? Uh, I shut up and, <laughs> and we go for a drive. All right. y'all right now i'm in a little neighborhood that i just think is pretty adorable in sort of a classic post-war 1950s era homes like neighborhoody where they really started to like figure out kind of the trick-or-treatable aspect of what neighborhoods could be tons of ramblers i would say 
98% of the homes here <laughs> are ranch style or ramblers, um, but they're very nicely kept. And it's just a good example of sort of some of the options here uh, in Hampton and Southampton. There's also some that have like, uh, like a sort of marsh frontage or kind of like water feature and or park feature in the backyard. So those can get kind of spendy, but nonetheless, it is a beautiful spot. So let's talk pros and cons though. I, again, this is one of these spots where it's hard to think of cons. Um, so let's start with the pros. And uh, a lot of these are standards that, that, you know, like we look at neighborhoods that have these things, we're trying to look for it, but nice outdoor spaces, right? Beautiful park spaces. I've already been to a couple. I think I'll end at another one, um, but just really nice. They do a good job with that aspect of things. Pro number two, overall good schools, right? I could also tack that on as a con, which is that potentially some of the schools don't rate quite as high. So you can't really blanket statement all the schools between the two you know, neighborhoods because yeah, they're not uh, extremely consistent. So maybe we'll say that's a con, first con, not the most consistent school scores in these two areas. So next pro, really close to DTC, right? So close, so commutable, so, I don't know, bikeable basically <laughs> to Denver Tech Center that, you know, that's undeniably a pro and just kind of like the amenities that that area offer. Fun fact, actually, uh, Denver Comedy Works has a spot in the Denver Tech Center. So I'm a fan of comedy and uh, that's pretty cool. I love how the light is just like, just hitting my head. Terrible lighting, sorry. Should be better. Um, <laughs> so another pro I'm gonna say is that for Hampton specifically, uh, home prices are pretty much exactly in line with the median of the Denver area. So that's, I can't call it a con cause that's like relatively affordable relative to the metro, right? Another pro, cute houses. The houses are maybe a little bit newer than what you might find in a lot of the uh, Denver neighborhoods closer to the city, right? Closer to downtown. Uh, these are maybe two-ish, two, three decades newer than a lot of those spots. So I think that's generally a good thing. The livability of like a ranch is like gen generally very good. They, they figured out, you know, layouts, pretty good by the 1950s. That's fairly close to, you know, what people expect out of like modern living. But then also just generally just cute houses, right? And for the most part, houses that are well taken care of, which is something that uh, I think is, is important, you know? For the most part, you could, you know, throw a dart at a map and most of the houses that you hit are gonna be well taken care of you know, on the whole. Um, another pro is these peaceful streets. This is chill. Like I recently did a video on the Spear neighborhood in Denver. I love that neighborhood, but the chill factor of this spot is just so much greater. You know, it's so much quieter, so much more peaceful. And that's something that just a lot of people, you know, value. I think lastly, um, last pro, fairly diverse house prices. Again, I don't know that the housing stock is that diverse because they tend to be a lot of like Rambler style homes, but fairly diverse price ranges, right? You can get like a truly immaculate home in Southampton for like a million or maybe even more than that. Um, or you could probably sneak into Hampton for 500, you know, for maybe something that's not particularly updated. So then let's move over to cons. What are the cons here? That was pretty tough. The first one is that Southampton is more expensive than the median, right? We're talking like 200,000-ish dollars more on the median than the median of the rest of the Denver area. So definitely pretty expensive. And then really, I, don't, I think this is the last con I can think of, which is that for being like a neighborhood in the city, it's kind of boring, you know? It's like technically in Denver, but it's not the most exciting <laughs> spot. So if you want that sort of like city living where it's real peaceful real chill borderline suburban lifestyle then may we introduce to you southampton and hampton um but yeah if you're looking for you know like a city lifestyle and you know where stuff's going on and you got a lot to do you know you can walk to stuff 
I don't think this is it. So that, just kind of the blandness, it's bordering, it's almost suburban and you know, for a lot of people, suburbs are awesome, that's what you want. But if you're looking at a map and you're like, okay, that's in Denver, yeah, but it's different, you know? It's a lot different than a lot of the neighborhoods that we talked about. So, all right, I'm gonna go for a drive and then I'll try to think of some spots that feel like this one. It, again, a little bit of a challenge. There are some. <laughs> all right, let's go. Alright my friends, right now I'm uh, headed toward, I'm uh, basically on a great little walking trail that goes through both these neighborhoods um, and I'm headed toward Hampton uh, Heights Park and I probably should make it there by the end of this. But if you watch these videos, you know that we have a section that we like to call our for fans of section, which is to say that if you like what you see in this neighborhood, check out these other neighborhoods because they have similar characteristics. But before I get into that, I would just like to say that if you are making a move to Denver or already live here and are just trying to buy a house or really any real estate needs at all, get a hold of us and we would love to be the ones to help you make the process as easy as possible. You can go to our website, welcome to denver.co. We have a contact form there that you could fill out in like 30 seconds, or you can shoot us an email directly to info at welcome to denver.co. They lead to the same inbox, completely up to you how, which way you do it. We just ask that you do and look forward to it. Look forward to ultimately helping you, you know, make stuff happen, make the move here. If you have nothing to do with Denver and you're trying to buy a home, your boy here uh, recently got licensed as a loan officer. So also reach out, same website, just inquire and uh, we'll get the show on the road. So let's get into it. What are the spots that feel similar to, you know, I know they're two different spots, but ultimately, fairly similar spots, Hampton and Southampton. Uh, the first ones that come to mind, it, naturally they're all a little bit outside of like the city center, right? So within the city proper, really there's two spots. So within Denver proper, there's two spots that come to mind. I'm sure there's a couple others, uh, but Virginia Village, which we uh, did a video on, definitely. Uh, check that out. It has a lot of like similar housing styles. It's closer to the city, so if you're maybe looking for something a little closer into the city, that could be a good option. Um, and then the other one is Harvey Park South, and that's pretty far southwest um, within Denver proper. But again, similar housing stock, neighborhoods kind of feel the same where they're sort of built in a similar era. And so, you know, driving around, it's gonna feel pretty similar. So then outside of the city proper, moving into the suburbs, a few other spots, I think, you know, are, are gonna be kind of close. First of which is Lakeland. And that's like a crazy statement because Lakeland is gigantic. <laughs> and like the further west you go, it's nothing like this, right? The further away from the city you go, it's just like so far from this. But the sort of closer sections, the further east sections of Lakeland feel kind of similar. A lot of ranch style homes on kind of like windy streets built in this, you know, this era um, and a lot of similar characteristics uh, in that regard. But again, further west you go, totally different. The next is also another massive place that you're gonna be like, well, that's, you know, totally different, but it's Aurora, right? And more so, some like the mid-range home priced areas of Aurora, if that makes sense. There's a really sort of high-end, fancy, ultra suburban side of Aurora, typically in like the Southeast. And that doesn't feel like this, naturally. There's also a little bit more of like the Northern part of Aurora. It's a little more hectic. It's a little more city lifestyle, right? But 
as you find somewhere in the middle of there, you're gonna see homes built in this era with neighborhoods that kind of feel like this. And then last is gonna be Arvada. And Arvada is just, it's like just kind of built in that right range where you're gonna have several post-war era neighborhoods, right? Which is ultimately like, what makes this neighborhood feel so specific is the era the homes were built in, but they're also gonna have, you know, potentially good, if not uh, slightly better, slightly worse schools than you're getting here, right? But I think those are the best that I can think of at the moment. I'm sure there's a couple that I'm forgetting. I feel like to the north, East is maybe something, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> that's, that's what I got for now. I hope this video has been helpful. As always, if you haven't done so yet, subscribe to the channel. Hey, we made it. Click the bell to get notified. You know, say what's up in the comments. You know the drill, reach out if you need us and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.